Biden administration frustrated by delay in aid to Ukraine but has no plan B. The administration of U.S. President Joe Biden is becoming increasingly frustrated with delays in funding for Ukraine's fight against Russia. There is growing concern in the United States that Russian troops could make significant gains in the coming weeks, according to Bloomberg. According to anonymous American officials, there is no plan B for the U.S. regarding aid to Ukraine apart from the $60 billion military assistance currently under consideration in Congress. One source emphasized that European leaders need to overcome delays and use profits from blocked Russian assets to aid Ukraine. At the same time, another source noted that European countries should also urgently respond to Ukraine's request to provide the country with more Patriot air defense systems from their stockpiles. The U.S. president is trying to convince Congress to pass military aid for Ukraine, dissuade Iran from launching strikes against Israel, and press Israel into letting more aid into Gaza. U.S. aid to Ukraine has stalled, allowing Russia to extend the conflict. The Biden administration has decided that it is time to share what it knows about China's significantly increased support for Russia in its war with Ukraine, including through declassifying intelligence, even as a Republican minority in Congress continues to delay weapons delivery to Kyiv. A senior administration official speaking on condition of anonymity outlined, for me, the concerning scale of Beijing's growing support for Moscow's war effort. China is dangerous, the official said, and the administration is determined to show allies evidence of Beijing's growing role in Russia's threats to European security. The official said 90% of the reason Russia has been able to sustain the war effort and reconstitute its economy despite sanctions is due to a massive effort by China that ranges from geospatial assistance for Russian targeting to dual-use optics and propellants used in everything from tanks to missiles. China supplied Ukraine with tens of thousands of drones to strike Russia. Iran has sold Russia thousands of drones to bomb Ukrainian cities and another 6,000 drones are to be produced in the Alabuga Special Economic Zone under an Iranian license. Meanwhile, Ukraine buys drones in much larger quantities to shell the enemy's frontline positions from another partner of Russia, China. Ukraine has found ways to get tens of thousands of drones as well as to establish a flow of spare parts for them from China, reports the Wall Street Journal. Purchases of finished products, primarily from SZDJI Technology, are carried out in stores and from suppliers. In addition, Chinese components are used in drones of their own production, which is growing rapidly. According to Georgi Chakaya, the defense advisor to the Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation, over the past year and a half, the number of drone manufacturers in the country has grown from seven to almost 300. Hundreds of thousands of simple, cheap devices that can carry explosives are produced in an artisanal and industrial way. Every month, the armed forces of Ukraine use about 10,000 drones on the battlefield. DJI told the Wall Street Journal that it tries to limit the use of its products for military purposes but cannot control their use after purchase. The US ban on the use of DJI drones from the military as well as Chinese components in the production of their own drones was one of the reasons why US-made drones are too expensive. Although the US tried to supply Ukraine, many American commercial drones cost tens of thousands of dollars more than Chinese models. In Ukraine, we would like to test and use more American drones, but we are still looking for more cost-effective solutions, Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation of Ukraine Georgi Dubinsky told. In addition, every drone software update requires Pentagon approval. However, the situation on the battlefield is changing so quickly that programmers and engineers have to constantly make adjustments to their models. What flies today can't fly tomorrow, Dubinsky says. We need to adapt quickly to emerging technologies. The innovation cycle in this war is very short. Cool, social, cool, social.